Welcome to USA FBL Fingerboard Podcast. I'm your host, Levine Cunningham, and I'm excited to be chatting with LaDani of Zimskate. Zimskate, also known as Zimskate on Instagram. LaDani, thanks for coming on the podcast. How are you? I'm great, Levine. Uh, great to be here. And hello, everybody out there. Man. All right. So for people that don't know who you are, you are located in the country of Zimbabwe. Yeah, uh, pretty interesting place in the world. Uh, so for those who know a bit about geography, it's just above South Africa. Uh, it's neighboring country to South Africa. And yeah, we're a really small but uh, vibrant country. Man, yeah, we're talking about transcending across continents at this point, but I'm excited. So Zim Skates is the first registered skate program in Zimbabwe. And so you being part of that organization and growing skateboarding and now looking into growing fingerboarding as well is a very cool and interesting thing that you guys are doing over there. And I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I couldn't do this without, uh, obviously, uh, taking so many notes from the United States of America. I mean, you guys are the originators of skateboarding. Uh, I just think of, you know, times when I watched, you know, the movies, the Dogtown and Z-Boys, the Bones Brigade, you know, straight out of California. Uh, because of the USA and, you know, people like you and USA FBL, it's been able to spread cross-continental to the likes of Zimbabwe, the likes of Africa, the likes of the rest of the world. So as much as we're happy to be pioneers, what we do, we're always thankful to you guys in the U.S. for making the platform for us to do what we do. No, that's that's a very, very cool observations for sure. I don't, I guess, because we're already in the United States, it's kind of hard for us to see like how everybody else views fingerboarding and skateboarding outside of our country. But yeah, that's awesome perspectives for sure. First off, if you guys made it this far, finger the like button. Also, we've got a crazy amount of stuff to go over this week. I'm excited to get into it. We've got a combo of the year. We've got about five more weeks left of combo of the year. So submit your best combination trick to USAFBL underscore c-o-t-y line of the year same thing we got five more weeks left of that as well submit your best line to usafbl underscore l-o-t-y and if you are listening to this right now we are leaking something extra special for you guys we've got a new project out we have produced a monthly thrasher style fingerboarding magazine tight ribbon lines that shine day and night so it is called Plies Magazine. It is a free downloadable magazine. We're going to be printing at a fee, and you guys are hearing it first for the first time on the podcast right here. So definitely check out Plies Magazine on Instagram and on YouTube. Ladani, man. All right. So I have always wanted to venture off and visit the continent of africa there's several countries and stuff out there but now that like you guys are producing a fingerboarding program with zim skates you guys are really turned me on to visiting zimbabwe and so kind of paint us a picture of kind of like what zimbabwe is i know you talked about like the country having a pretty young population and kind of kind of tell us some uh some details okay uh thanks a lot Levine. so where do i start uh zimbabwe formally founded in 1980 that's when we gained independence uh pretty much it's like i said it's a small country it's very nice uh, in terms of the weather, the climate is usually very warm. Right now it's summer. Uh, I guess it's winter in the north. Here yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hot. So skating and other activities are very much on uh, in public spaces. Um, and, you know, Zimbabwe is just one of those countries where the people are very friendly. Um, you get a lot of uh, mixed people from mixed backgrounds in terms of like social economics. But when we do events, anything culture related, anything... Uh, with basically like a youth sort of vibe, everyone just gets together. And you'd be surprised at, you know, the contributions you'll get, whether it's uh, people wanting to assist, you know, if it's a skating program, if people wanting to show up to even sing a song, you know, poetry. There's so much talent uh, in the young people in Zimbabwe that um, we're really happy that now with the fingerboarding program, we're able to channel it somewhere that is really going to cause 
big impact in the whole society and the whole nation. And I'm really excited to be part of that. Um, we do have the beautiful Victoria Falls, which is one of the wonders of the world. Uh, so where I'm located in the city of Harare is more or less like in the Northeast. Um, and that's the capital city, uh, AKA Sunshine City. So it's always sunny in Harare. Uh, recently, we got a bunch of people getting uh, like massive solar, solar power and stuff because we do have, you know, being a developing country, we do have some energy issues here and there, but we got so many guys getting solar uh, because it's always sunny in Harare and people are friendly. Like you'd be surprised, like the average person will, if you ask an average person on the street, I don't know how things are uh, there, like where you are, but everybody like is willing to help. Like you think, is this real? Like people are really like outgoing, friendly, and just want everybody to get ahead. I guess that that's uh, what I would say is Zimbabwean is. <laughs> no, that's also more of a real sense of community outside of just finger wording, but just in real life. Definitely, definitely. And in terms of my personal background, uh, more or less, I'm from two sides. So uh, we've got two main tribes, which is the Shona and the Nebeli. Uh, I know some people might uh, recognize this from your podcast because there's so many Zimbabweans all over the world, including the USA. So I'm a mixture of both tribes. My dad is from the Shona. My mom was from the Nebeli. So it kind of helped me to get an appreciation of I guess three languages as opposed to most people do two. So for me, it's like English language, obviously through school. Then there's the Shona, then there's the Nebele tribe, which is more like the Southern tribe. And so it kind of, it's pretty cool that I got an appreciation of every Zimbabwean from that perspective of like a cultural basis, if that makes sense. No, definitely does. I feel like multiple, just knowing multiple language now is like, Definitely a flex, especially if you're a traveler, just being able to go to different places and different cultures and being able to communicate is uh it's a very like rewarding feeling for sure. Definitely, definitely. So tell us about Zimskate. I know Zimskate is a skateboarding program, but kind of like tell us when it was started and kind of like the foundation of how it became a uh, from start to where it's at now. Right. Uh, so Zimskate pretty much started in 2018. Uh, this was like a concept between friends. So we're like, guys, you know, what's happening? The skateboarding, you know, we always like to, you know, go out and skate and like, you know, hang out with friends. But we wanted to give the experiences we had to a larger group of people. You know, like what if we can get the joy that we had from skating to everyone else? So we met together literally just a meeting amongst friends and say, oh, uh, let's form like an organization. Let's call it Zimskate. We're going to partner with so-and-so. We're going to do this and that. And I kid you not, a lot of these things, um, we just were speaking and putting it out there. And a lot of things that we spoke about on that first meeting that I still recall, we've actually done or are now in progress, which is pretty crazy um, over the short uh, six years or so that we've been running. So our first program formally started in 2019, where we went to uh, the neighborhood that I was staying in. It's got a population of about 90,000 school going kids. Uh, that's aged from about three to 18. So uh, kids had this big tennis court. Uh, the place is called Zebra. I don't know why it's called Zebra, but uh, it's almost like a tennis court area that has a lot of like traffic, like on the outside, like cars coming through in and out of the neighborhood. So people play sport there sometimes. So there would be like karate, there would be judo, there'd be handball. So we're like, hey, why don't we come and skate here? And I remember the first day we went there, uh, you know, kids were looking like, okay, you know, if you came through five or so, by the second day, the numbers grew to about 50. By the third day, it doubled. And we're like, okay, people really want to skate. Like, that's where we're like, we, we we're onto something. We, we really want to uh, take this further. And so we did. Uh, with time, we ended up working uh, over the COVID period in Chimani Mani, where we did a project with the, the UN uh, FAO, which is United uh, Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, uh, where we did a youth training that had 37 youth participants 
this was more youth and business, but it had a recreational uh, part, which was more or less the skating. So through that, we managed to negotiate with a, the hotel out in Chimani Mani, which is like a rural district. And we constructed uh, our first version of a skate park, <laughs> and so, which is more or less like it was a slab that had like uh, some mini ramps inside, all out of concrete. And it's still standing to this day. So I'm pretty proud of that achievement. Amongst the other things we're doing, including the fingerboarding now, that we're excited to be uh, working closely with you and USA FBL uh, to grow the sport around the world. No, oh, that's awesome. So I guess kind of tell me more about some of the skate programs that you guys have offered or are still offering. So right now, uh, the main skate program that we're offering is called the School Skating Program. So this was in partnership with obviously the national body, which was a Zimbabwe Skateboarding Association that I'm also part of. So on that, I sit as the secretary general for the country, but as Zimskate, I'm kind of the founder slash director. So through Zimskate, we've managed to offer, um, I'll put it up about right now, a couple of thousand kids the opportunity to skate uh, since its inception in, I think it was early 2022, just at the end of sort of like the COVID restrictions up until now, when we started to actually get into schools and train different kids, uh, mainly focused on primary school age kids, because they're also not tied up with things like exams and things like that. And they're more willing to start an early foundation and try uh, new things like skateboarding, which is really exciting. So we worked with a lot of uh, junior junior age kids, uh, and it's now ranging into the thousands uh, easily. Yeah, and hopefully to grow even more. <laughs> That's crazy. I normally get I get messages all the time. Like probably now that combo and line of the year is going on. I mean, I'm getting messages and all kinds of stuff. You know, probably like a hundred a day. It feels like. And about two or three months ago. You messaged me on the Zimskate account and you're like, hey, we are looking at adopting a fingerboarding program into our skateboarding program and was wondering if you guys could help us with that. And I get messages all the time and I help a lot of people like start fingerboarding events and meetups and things like that. But this one was definitely uh, the most unique of all of the ask, I think I was just like in Zimbabwe and I'm like, and you're like, yeah, in Zimbabwe. And I'm like, huh. And uh, I immediately like messaged back and I was like, we should definitely like kind of talk more about this. Cause you know, most people in the community, like I kind of sort of know who they are or where they're from and kind of their area and who to connect them with and stuff like that. But Zimbabwe being a little bit uh, outside of our realm, I was like, we, we need to meet and kind of talk about it, organize it, get more information and stuff and how we can make this a thing. And we have developed a really strong friendship and a really strong partnership out of this whole ordeal. So let's kind of talk about Zim, like Zimskate's adopting fingerboarding into their program. Yeah, uh, well, I guess just to mention on like your first point, like how we met and all, um, it's really humbling to know that somebody in your position um, being, you know, founder, of your USA FBL and all you've done in the community, um, the events you've done, um, the league that you've established. Uh, I was even shocked at how quickly you responded. I was like, oh, is he actually responding to my message? You know, like I was, I was hit almost like a fan, like, you know, like, <laughs> but I really appreciate, you know, um, like, uh, you know, how quickly you got back to me and like now the event that we're planning and everything that's coming up, it's, really going to be something amazing so i just i just think like in terms of like fingerboarding going forward um the program was really easy to integrate into like our school's program right now because kids are already skating uh as a recreational activity you know extracurricular so we're like okay maybe to the kids that want to take a break during skating or that are wanting to expand uh, the whole and understand the whole realm of skateboarding because it's not just limited to your feet now. Now you've got fingerboards. You can use your hands now, you know? So we're like, it's a really exciting opportunity to get um, even young kids and even people that are post your skateboarding careers 
um, to actually get involved in the fingerboarding. So, for example, right now, um, one of the schools that I coach, uh, which is Harare International School, on a Wednesday afternoon, uh, I think for the past about two semesters, which is over a little over a year ago, we just put out a table. I literally, my first fingerboard build was uh, some cardboard that uh, I just you know, paper mache painted it, you know, really DIY, but uh, it was really stable, surprisingly. And we took out a, a bunch of tech decks and just started, you know, skating around. Only to realize that because it's an international school, you have a lot of students from the US, a lot of students from, you know, UK, all over. Guys were coming in with fingerboards, like, you know, different builds, different makes that I'd never seen, you know, Tony Hawk brand and this and that. And I'm like, what? So then kids started popping and now it's like a regular part of my skate program, which I never thought would be. But I guess when you take the chance, these are the things that come out. And so I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be uh, Opal Zimskate to be part of the fingerboarding community. Definitely. That's awesome. No, I found in my experiences that if you put out a fingerboarding park or a table of ramps or whatever, like you could be in the most like remote places, like you're going to come across somebody that knows what fingerboarding is or currently is fingerboarding. Like it's one of those uh, hidden gems, I guess, like everybody, I feel like everybody does it, but like no one talks about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like that thing that people just get out and do. And you're like, okay, you do that too. I see you, you know? <laughs> For sure. I, yeah. All right. So we've got the very first fingerboarding exhibition going down in the country of Zimbabwe. And I couldn't be more excited for you guys. You guys, we've been planning this for a few months now, and I feel like you definitely need to give all of the, the details for this event. Right, right, right. I mean, it's that time, definitely. So uh, this exhibition that we've been planning for a couple of months, uh, it's actually scheduled for the 6th and the 7th of December, 2024. Uh, well, lucky enough, we managed to partner with uh, these guys we worked before called Motor Republic, which is basically a youth creative hub in the heart of the city. And um, they do a lot of youth and community related uh, programs. So you got different guys coming in, whether they're musicians, actors, singers. We've even got uh, different programs, uh, youth programs that people do. So we were like, hey, Let's come in and let's have a fingerboarding uh, program and hopefully uh, have our first fingerboarding club come out of that. And they were stoked with the idea. They were like, guys, we've got to do this um, sooner rather than later. So I'm so glad that uh, we got support from you guys at USA FBL. Shout out also to uh, Take Tuning as well. We'll also be involved in that. And we're just so happy to be bringing this to the people of Zimbabwe. Um, the event is going to be set over uh, the two days and we're looking at like a whole day exhibition that will be open to the general public. So the nice thing about Moto Republic as a venue, there are usually a lot of youth activities happening, especially uh, on the Friday and Saturday when we're doing it. So we were saying even to the event hosts or to the to the hosting uh, party which is motor republic anybody that's in the area can just come through and just see the tables will be set up we'll have you know music playing in the background things going on some things on screen to see and people can just come get involved you know even sign up check out our instagram get involved and let's start growing the community from grassroots you know um that's 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 really exciting. That's that's pretty much what we have, you know. No, it's exciting times for sure. I know, like you said, Teak Tuning is a sponsor, USFBL is a sponsor, Spitboards is a sponsor, and Create a Skate is also a sponsor. I'm not sure if there's enough time once this podcast comes out if anybody else is willing to uh, become a sponsor and ship out a pack, but I know that Landani here with Zimskate would definitely love any donations or anything like that that would help his fingerboarding program out here in the future. So if you're a brand or a company and you want to donate a few boards or a couple obstacles, anything like that, anything would be deeply appreciated. And I'll also have uh, links here in the description and stuff as well as to how to get a hold of Ladani here with some skates. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I've got a question to ask, if you don't mind, not to yeah. put you on the spot or anything. 
I don't know with the, the USA fingerboarding league, will it be something possible in the future or if it's not already happening now? If, say, you got talented uh, fingerboarders from whether it's Mexico, Canada, uh, Zimbabwe, places like Europe that want to actually maybe be based, whether it's in the US where you guys do your circuits, uh, to actually be part of that, but based in the US, but representing another country. Maybe I'm thinking too far, kind of like how football leagues work and other things where you get a bunch of people even representing their own countries, but part of the league as well. That would be so cool. Yeah, we've got some ideas for 2026, maybe producing maybe a fingerboarding like X Games, I guess you would kind of say. I think that's probably more of what mm. you're kind of like reaching at. I know 2025, we've got regionals and nationals. And I know in 2026, we're going to be playing off of that more on a global scale. So we've got big plans coming up for the future. I think that uh, we just kind of got to be patient and wait. But I definitely think that what you're asking and what I'm thinking are pretty much the same thing. Cool, cool. No, awesome, awesome. Looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm excited as well. It's all about uh, planning, growing the fingerboarding scene, and kind of just uh, implementing all this stuff so we can develop a platform for people to come on and do their thing. And so I'm excited for all this stuff to kind of go down. So we got definitely some big plans. Definitely follow us, subscribe, keep up with all the news, all the exciting details and stuff like that for 2025 it's going to be uh it's going to be crazy for sure for sure for sure so with zim skates like how long have you been in the program with the organization so i was there uh from its inception uh like i mentioned before i'm like one of the guys who was in the first meeting when we decided to you know actually turn it into a brand and actually turn it into something that would involve more than just a group of friends, you know? And so since then, obviously like any organization or with partnerships, you know, some people have come, some people have gone and, you know, it's just been that rotation. But I can safely say I am probably the, one of the few, or I'm probably the only person at the table that was at the original meeting for Zimskate. So, you know, that just, you know, it's a testament to the passion that I've had for this thing and seeing it grow to where it is now to actually having program and the programs that, you know, touch so many people. It's, it's, it's a dream come true job. Like I can't ask for anything else as like a day job <laughs> than to skateboard and, you know, have fun. <laughs> okay. So that's, so from the beginning, beginning, so you must have like, a lot of amazing stories and memories. Is there one particular memory or story that kind of sticks out? Yeah, um, the one that sticks out uh, is the time I broke my leg. Uh, I think every skater has a bad slam. Uh, and so mine happened soon after we started. This was in December 2018. I won't forget because December is my birthday month. So uh, this was December 8th, uh, 2018. Uh, so I've been watching a lot of, you know, videos and just hyping myself up, you know, seeing guys skating, you know, your Tony Alvarez skating in pools and doing all sorts of acrobatics. So me not having skated uh, for a bit of a while by then, I think it was closer to a couple of months. And I was just like, OK, let me just jump straight into like vert pool skating, you know, which was a really bad idea at the time. So I got a bunch of guys who got some cameras were like, OK. Let's go and like film, you know, like a session, like a piece inside this empty swimming pool. Now, for starters, the swimming pool itself had kind of a steep curve when it came from the shallow to the deep end. It was pretty small, nice and circular, but it was very, very narrow. You know, if you can imagine a really small pool that kind of looks more like a pit than an actual, you know, nice, big, wide pool. That was one problem that now in retrospect, I see I should have actually analyzed and said, look, this is not skatable right now with what I'm trying to achieve. I got in and I, I had my friend's board, you know, God bless him. It was a really bad board, uh, first of all. Like I, some of the, the wood was coming out as well as, you know, it wasn't in the best condition. But I was like, you know what, I got this. So I went from the shallow end uh, popped into the deep. Having not skated vert like that, already my dip into the deep end, I was like relaxed. I didn't like lean into it. 
So I was kind of at the same like body position, which obviously as you're going down the decline, your body starts to swing backwards. So really I was getting it all wrong. Luckily I hit the bottom somehow. I'm flipping round to go up. That's where I totally lost it. So the board went flying in the air. I came out and I was in the air now. I'm like, okay, I'm on a curve like this. How do I land? Trying to be Spider-Man, I'm like, let me try to land on my feet. Bad idea. As I'm coming down, I literally jammed the inside of my left foot on the curve. So my leg basically snapped like a twig. This was like my ankle to my foot. It snapped around sideways. And I kid you not, for the first time in my life, I saw the underside of my shoe. Like I've uh. never seen, like looking straight, <laughs> the underside of my foot. And so, you know, being a guy who's played sport before, like a rugby and stuff, I just literally, my first instinct was the bone has got to be back in place if, if it's working just to test. So I popped it back. I just did a pop. And then I tested it because, you know, like the adrenaline is still rushing. You're not in pain yet. So I popped it back and I'm like, okay, my foot is fine. It's just going to really get bad. And that was it, you know, it swelled up from there. I was in crutches for a month and I'll never forget that story because it actually got me more focused on being a better skater. <laughs> that is the most gnarly story I think I've heard on the podcast. I absolutely love that. I mean, I hate that it happened to you, but that's a, that's an awesome story, man. Yeah, That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part about that, I was the designated driver for the day. Oh, uh, no. Luckily enough, the car was auto. So we drive on the right side and all our gears on the right side. So I was using my right foot and my left leg was just hanging off. So I was going brake, accelerate, and I drove everybody home. And that was it. Like <laughs> You're a beast. Yeah. You're a beast. <laughs> this is going to be a great time to do our listen to win contest. So we've got a 98 by 32 USAFBL laser engraved deck up for grabs. Ladani here came up with the challenge. It's actually a pretty good one. I'm, I'm excited. So we are looking for the best kick flip indie grab rock to fakie on a transitional piece. So it could be a quarter pipe, a half pipe. If you don't have any of those obstacles, your kitchen sink, bathroom sink will work just great. So we're looking for the best kick flip indie grab rock to fakie. You guys are going to need to tag USAFBL, USAFBL underscore FBP and Zim skates on Instagram. So post your reel, make it a post. Tag those three accounts and Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern time is when the contest will end. So this audio comes out Wednesday, video on Thursday, contest ends 5 p.m. Friday. Let's uh, let's see your best kickflip indie grab, rock to fakey. Theoretically, Ladani was probably trying to do that trick and didn't quite make it out and broke his leg. So this is fingerboarding, so <laughs> hopefully it'll be a lot safer and uh, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> So, Ladani, you have any uh, upcoming projects besides the fingerboarding exhibition? I know once that's done, what's the future look like for Zim Skates? So, a uh, future that I'm really excited to speak about is uh, in 2025, we're looking to expand our reach to another province of our country. So, our country has 10 provinces. Uh, right now, we're mainly, most of our programs are out of Harare province, which is uh, it's pretty big. Um, we got about a population of 3 million people, but the next biggest town, the next biggest province is, uh, it's called Matabeliland province. Matabeliland. And in that, there's also the main city, which is Bulawayo, which has its own provincial uh, state, which is Bulawayo province. Uh, that's almost like my mother's hometown kind of place. So we're going to expand our program, skate program into Bulawayo and obviously get a lot of kids, a lot of schools, a lot of community programs happening there with skateboarding. Uh, and eventually we're looking to link all 10 provinces uh, to skate uh, both recreationally as well as competitively um, over a set number of years. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> that's big. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Hence the name Zim Skates. Yeah. So it's for the whole country. <laughs> 
No, I like that. That's kind of where we're at too with the uh, USAFBL. It's not just like one city or state, it's the the whole country, but much like you guys, we're looking to expand out more globally, things like that. So man, that's awesome what you guys are doing. Is there uh any hobbies that you're into that maybe people don't know about you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, one hobby I've had since childhood, I'm a big gamer. I uh, play video games. Uh, recently started a few mobile games, although most people will tell you it's like playing like Lotto or something because what you're doing is just pretty much watching ads and videos to get upgrades. But for those who know, you know, uh, I'm a console guy. Uh, also just recently got into PC gaming. Like the graphics are awesome. Like I know I've been biased to like Playstations and Xboxes and stuff, but yeah, I see why PC gamers have been dedicated to PC because the upgrades you can do, the speed of processing, uh, the kind of games you can play, it's just on another level, you know, the graphics with the right graphics card and setup. So yeah, I'm an avid gamer. Uh, since Nintendo NES, I guess Super Mario up to now, it's, it's been a couple of years. I mean, I'm I got a bit of gray hair, like it's it's yeah, it's, it's been a while, <laughs> right? On, right? On, yeah, same here. yeah. I'm a gamer, fingerboarder that's uh, my two, my two biggest, biggest passions for sure. Man, well, Ladani, I know you yeah. probably got a list of people you want to shout out or give recognition to. Definitely. Um, first of all, I'd like to say uh, shout out to you, Levine. You know, shout out to USA FBL uh, for giving us this platform and opportunity to uh, share what little we're doing in Zimbabwe to the rest of the world and how you guys have affected us. Um, obviously, shout out to the sponsors for the upcoming events. Like we said, Teak Shooting, uh, Spitboards, uh, Creator Skate as well. And um, shout out to Oh, she'll be mad if I don't say this. Shout out to my wife, uh, Marsha Matauri, uh, for being in my support. So shout out to her for always having my back. <laughs> and I guess last but not least, um, I'm a God-fearing person. So shout out to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who I wouldn't be here without. Amen. Amen. I like that. Man. All right. So... I've got a few shout outs as well. First off, if you're listening to this on our Patreon account before everybody else with early access, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love and support. All of our sanctioned events for 2024 looks like they are done, but we've got a few sanctioned events happening in 2025. We've got Hangtime Skate Shop running their first sanction event for 2025 on january 4th we've also got the starlight camp fingerboarding event happening in sealy texas on march 22nd and 23rd it's a camping event super excited to have those events going down we've also got cody combo of the year we got a thousand dollars cash and prizes going out at the end of the year you got five more weeks left to get your clip in to win some of that cash and prizes we've also got line of the year as well we're giving out five hundred dollars cash and prizes as well so tag your best clip to usafbl underscore c-o-t-y and your best clip to usafbl underscore l-o-t-y also, like I said, we leaked uh, we leaked the Plies magazine, the Thrasher style monthly fingerboarding magazine. So definitely go take a peek at that. We're getting ready to launch pre-orders for the printed and then the digital version is going to come out for free December 1st. So super, super excited to be releasing that to you guys as well. So lots going down at USAFBL. Looks like there's a lot going down here at Zimskates as well. Well, Donnie, where can people find you? I know, I don't know if you want people to reach out to you personally or if you're all using the Zimskate accounts, but where can people find you? Uh, so you guys can find me on Instagram uh, as well as on Facebook. It's both at Zimskate. Uh, then if you want, you can check out our website as well, which is www.zimskate.com. Uh, reach out to us also on email if you want which is zimskate, uh, pvt at gmail.com. Uh, so looking forward to getting in touch with y'all, making things happen. And I'm going to make it super easy for everybody. I'm going to put those links in the description. Well, Donnie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much, Levine. I uh, appreciate you uh, for this opportunity. And 
peace to everybody out there. And so oh, what we say at the Zoomscapes. Oh yeah, you're gonna do the sign uh, off. Keep on grinding. It's keep, uh, on, keep on grinding. grinding. <laughs>